How might current friction between the U.S. and China impact America's economic recovery and, more importantly, sustainability goals moving forward? My name is Edward Cunningham, and I am the director of the Ash Center's China programs and the Asia Energy and Sustainability Initiative at the Harvard Kennedy School. The U.S., of course, cannot go it alone when it comes to a sustainable and equitable recover globally. More importantly, we must also recognize that China is currently critical even to achieving some of our own domestic sustainability goals, and our policy needs to incorporate this reality. Today's tariff friction is in some ways a strategic opportunity for the United States. In the short term, to reduce the tariffs harming our own green recovery, and in the medium term, to build resilient and more diverse supply chains. We need to understand that the U.S. currently relies on Chinese imports for many key aspects of our renewable industries. When we levied tariffs on Chinese batteries, it was not about protecting that particular industry in the U.S. I think many misunderstand that. A key fundamental goal of the trade war with China is access to the Chinese market an equal playing field in other areas, like, for example, financial services. So a range of tariffs were erected to create leverage for the U.S. to then pressure China to live up to its WTO commitments and open up further. We did ramp up such pressure, but we did not intelligently address the impact of those tariffs on our own economy here at home. Many of those tariffs hit hard key parts of the American economy, segments critical to the priorities of the Biden administration. So what does this mean? It means, on the one hand, we need to take our foot a bit off the brake in trade and put our foot on the gas in investments domestically and abroad. First, in the short term, targeted tariff pressure on China will and should continue. But trade policy with China should be recalibrated in particular to support job growth where we most need it, sustainable infrastructure. We must reduce tariffs in those segments of the renewable supply chain that actually drive job growth in the U.S. and depend on lower cost foreign goods. Second, in the short to medium term, so looking a bit farther out, if we are serious about shifting dependence on China in our trade, then we need to combine our pressure on China with significant targeted investment in our own renewable industries to, one, counteract the impact of those tariffs, two, upgrade our R&D capabilities, three, make more resilient our supply chains, and four, meet the actual green recovery goals uh, of the Biden administration itself. Lastly, despite the difficulties Congress may continue to create at uh, regarding global trade agreements and regional trade agreements. The U.S. should support a new version of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, but include this time the climate provisions that were dropped during the Obama administration, as well as related labor standards, for example, in critical partners like Vietnam. We need to be leading the discussion with our allies in Asia about setting such standards. Without our allies and the major markets for sustainable infrastructure upholding those standards, U.S. influence will be greatly limited, our unilateral impact on China's behavior will likewise be limited, and the strength of Chinese influence in standards will, of course, rise. In the past decade, China has invested over $250 billion through its Belt and Road Initiative, and this is to construct infrastructure projects in an estimated 138 countries throughout the world, many in the developing world, of course. U.S. foreign aid and assistance has dropped significantly under the Trump administration and perhaps most uh, troubling when it comes to climate change mitigation and adaptation, as well as sustainable infrastructure. So from Kenya to Indonesia to Sri Lanka, Chinese financing has actually begun to encounter significant challenges abroad. Overseas energy financing by China's two largest policy banks is at its lowest level in over a decade. Meanwhile, Korea, the EU, and other allies are moving forward with their own green infrastructure initiatives globally. So this is an opportunity. The U.S. can join these allies by strengthening, for example, USAID's 
sustainability portfolio, but also supporting private sector investment assistance from the US International Development Finance Corporation, DFC, and supporting an increase in sustainability focused loans from US supported but international institution, such as the World Bank. Thank <music> you.